We'd hoped for it, we heard about it, and now it's here. Yes, everybody, Nissan has Nismoed the Z. And today, we're gonna drive it. It's still got the same twin turbo three liter V6 powering it, but now it's got a redesigned wastegate, increased cooling, and they've tweaked the ignition timing. All those things mean more. Yes, now you are looking at 420 horsepower up from 400, and you're looking at 384 pound feet of torque that comes in peak at 2000 RPM to 5000 RPM. And yes, you feel all that power. This car isn't weighing in at all that much, and the power of the original felt like it was more than adequate. This just ratchets things up a whole lot. I thought the throttle felt really eager on the Z Performance. Here, it feels even more so. Right at tip-in, you don't get a whole lot of turbo lag, you just get a lot of juicy acceleration. Nissan's also given the Z Nismo a bigger oil cooler, and that means more time out on the track without fear of overdoing things. Okay, brace yourself, enthusiasts. This next piece of information might be a bummer for you, but I'm gonna tell you that it shouldn't be. The Z Nismo comes only with an automatic transmission, no manual, but don't get too upset, hear me out. This is primarily a track-focused car. With an automatic transmission, you are going to have faster lap times than you will ever get using a manual. Nissan's sharpened up the shifts and the clutch plates have been increased for more heat capacity. So there's no concern for overheating. No one's saying a manual isn't great and you still can get a manual on the normal Z or the Z Performance, but on this one, in my opinion, this choice makes sense. Because of that extra power that this puts down, you do get extra stopping power. There are larger four piston 15 inch rotors up front and 13.8 inch rotors on the rear. In the original video I did with the Z Performance, I think I may have described those brakes as wonderful. Here, I feel like they're so much more plussed. They're so much more sure-footed. If you do wanna go watch that original video, the link's up there. Those brakes are tasked with stopping some better and wider tires. These 19-inch wheels are dressed in Dunlop SP Sportmax GT 600s. Yes, that's the tire that's on the GTR. They offer up plenty more grip. They are really sticky. I mean, these things just glue you to the road. And ultimately, that means you're more confident. When you're in a straight line, you can really put the power down. And even at the end of the day, after some hard driving, I didn't get a sense of brake fade. Even though this is a performance-oriented car, in standard mode, this really doesn't feel super, super harsh. It's eating up the road really nicely, certainly absorbing bumps, but there's nothing that's really kind of brain-rattling about it, and I could easily drive this car every day. Okay, if you watched my original video on the Z, you'll know that my biggest gripe was in the stiffness of the suspension when doing sporty driving. My wish was that the Nismo variant would address that for those who wanted a more aggressive setting. Well, here's what you get. Sport Plus mode is in the house. This was my biggest complaint on the Z Performance. And the first thing that it does is it really does quicken downshifts. So if you feel like, oh my gosh, there's not a manual transmission and I'm not shifting this myself, never fear. I feel like this transmission really does do a great job of putting you in the gear that you want to be in. So I will shift it into manual so I can do the shifts myself with the paddles. And probably eight or nine times out of 10, if I switch from automatic into manual back, it's just so I can see like what gear it's chosen. Like eight times out of 10, it's picked the gear that I would pick. So I really enjoy using the paddles, but this automatic shifter is really doing a great job selecting gears, especially around windy roads when my speed is modulating. The chassis has gotten new bracing, which gives it 2.5% more lateral and torsional rigidity. 
If you add that to the number that they've already cranked out of this chassis from the previous Generation Z, then that number is looking pretty impressive. The Z Nismo also gets stiffer bushings and mount points and larger dampers which all make for improved stability and agility around turns. The improvements they've made really do make a difference. There is significantly less body roll and boy, these tires, they're a game changer. I know the dimensions of this car have not changed, but it really almost feels like it's wider and flatter uh, because it feels so planted. So they are admittedly pumping sound in here, but I'm gonna be honest, the engine sounds pretty good. Steering feel is even more precise, so you don't spend so much time making corrections while driving. But as far as the ride goes, there is no change to the ride feel between Sport and Sport Plus. I'll dive into my feelings about that a little bit later. It does get some useful changes to the exterior. The front end gets extended and wears a new grille that is more open for additional cooling. It also gets a splitter that improves downforce. The rear spoiler also improves downforce and reduces drag. This red stripe that highlights the spoiler runs clear around the car, and I think that's a great feature to call out that you've ponied up the extra cabbage for the Nismo edition. The blacked out roof does that too, as well as the obvious badging. When it comes to the interior, not a whole lot changes, but the changes that, that are made are significant. These seats are one of the most important. Recaro seats, these are sport buckets. They're super comfortable. You get the Nismo stitching on here. Uh, I kind of wish these seats were in every car I drove. The other thing that you're gonna see is red accents. The stop start button, the drive mode button, your steering wheel marker here. So those little things, some extra badging, other than that, the interior of the Z stays virtually the same. You get the hints from the historic Z up here with these gauges. Um, you get your touch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, I said it before in another video, overall, I really feel like this interior is well laid out and it's super comfortable. So if you do use this as a daily driver, you're not gonna be hurting after a long road trip. Red isn't your only color option. You will be able to pick from Black Diamond Pearl, Brilliant Silver, Everest White Pearl, and Stealth Gray, which you can only get on the Z Nismo. Now Nissan did give me a chance to drive the Z Nismo right after the Z Performance on track to better demonstrate the differences. So out of the gate, the first thing that I feel that's so different over the Z performance is these tires are making such a huge difference. And honestly, the added aero is also keeping this car really, really planted to the track. The shifts in Sport Plus are much quicker. They're also a little bit of an event, so you can definitely feel when they're happening. And I will say third gear is long and lovely and absolutely luscious. You can do a lot of things in third gear. The one place where Nissan does not make any adjustments in Sport Plus is in the damping rates. There's no electronic dampers on this. So you're not going to get a super, super firm ride when you're in Sport Plus. But I'm gonna say this, from the tires to the aero to the brakes, to the way that the automatic shifts now, even to the noise in the cabin, every single thing that's going on around you is kind of giving you the illusion of more. And so when it comes to the actual damping, honestly, I, I don't think you're gonna miss it, especially if you're on a track that's nice and smooth. I know that Nissan did it for a couple of reasons. The first is price. Electronic dampers are expensive and they wanted to keep costs down. Secondly, they are really considering that the people who have this car are also using it as a daily driver and don't really frankly want something that's gonna rattle their teeth or break their back. So they have to straddle a very fine line between GT and sports car and honestly, I feel like the Nismo does just that. Again, for someone wanting even more out of this car, they're likely going to have to build it out themselves. But also, the decisions the engineers made here make perfect sense to me for what this car is and who they're expecting is going to buy it. Speaking of who is going to buy it, where the base Z 
easy is really for that person who wants to tune out their car all by themselves. The Z Nismo is going to be for that customer who wants a track focused car but doesn't necessarily want to put in all of that work themselves. Pricing on the Z Nismo start at $64,990. That does not include destination. Deliveries should be expected in the fall, so look for that. And hey, if you want to buy one and you're looking for a fair purchase price, Kelly Blue Book can help. Click the link. If you are in the market for a super sporty car, the GR Corolla Marismo Edition from Toyota is a great place to start. That thing smokes. There's also the Hyundai Veloster N and the VW Golf R, while it's still in the US. There are also EVs which are coming to market with souped up variants, including the Kia EV6 GT. That thing is a rocket. So there are plenty of options to satisfy the speed junkie in you. Not a lot of manufacturers do it, but I'm really pleased that Nissan did. They put their money where their mouth is, and they've turned the Z into much more of a performance-minded car with the Nismo. Are you curious? Are you interested? Get yourself in the driver's seat and check it out.